Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad you join us for our time together. Just a reminder that next Sunday morning there is no in-person worship next Sunday morning, but you can log on to Facebook Live or to our website, and there will be an offering there. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but because we were going to pre-record, but we did it. So wherever I am next Sunday morning. I don't know what state that's going to be, but you will hear from me somewhere. So you can log in for that. And September 8th, then we'll have worship. We'll be outside for our final outside summer worship. And then on September 18th is our final summer Wednesday night. And there is a sign-up sheet back on the desk um, for folks who are coming to that for our last summer Wednesday night. Will you join me in our peace this morning? Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be in our midst. Peace be in our very souls. Peace be the light of our path. Peace be the way of our work. Peace, peace be with you. And also with you. Our opening video this morning is called What If the Church? No love, Gina. No talks amongst yourselves. Okay. Do you hear all this encouragement up here for me to entertain you? <laughs>
And now we'll listen to the prelude. So if you haven't heard, ask me about it after church, but yes, I was the biggest loser. Elaine's looking at me like, no way, I'm this competitive, but I did lose. 100%. But these words, what if? Let's make a difference this week. Will you join me in the call to worship? How wonderful it is to be in a dwelling place for God. The experience of God's love. There is a place here for everyone. No one is turned away. The least and the lost, the homeless and the hopeless, are always welcome in God's house. Praise to God who invites us and shelters us all. Praise to God who heals and sends us forth to serve. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <laughs>
now to pray with me the opening prayer. In the beauty of this place, we have come to pray, to worship, to receive healing and hope. We come from the struggles and triumphs of the week, needing to feel the soothing presence of God. Lord, be with us this day. Calm and soothe our souls. Cause us to rejoice that you have provided a special place where we may gather to talk to your presence and love, to sing your praises, and to be empowered to go forth to serve you. Amen. As God has welcomed us, so God invites us to welcome others with generous gifts and heartfelt love. May we share our offerings and gifts in the spirit of generosity and love. scholarships to our young adults who are continuing their education, uh, whether that be college or through trade schools. So uh, I was pretty excited because in four years on the committee, this is the first time I've gotten to do this. Um, so Carly put in her application for our scholarship. She wrote a very moving essay. Um, so I'm sure most of you know she is a lifelong member of our church and does a whole lot for our church continues to do that and she has accepted to be one of our volunteers to help us get children's church back on its feet and moving um and she not only just accepted that but uh came to jim and said no we need to make some changes and so you're working on the room upstairs correct so she's going to she's working towards her degree to be a special education teacher and you're at ohio state in lima you completed your sign language degree, is that right? No, I didn't So she's working on that as well as everything else. Um, so just a really neat opportunity, and we are very pleased to help her on that journey. Um, so congratulations. Oh, yes. tried so hard. I know. I was just going to go fast and I'm not, but they get close together. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Thanks for being serious. <laughs> Our gathering song this morning is Blessed Quietness. And if you want to follow along, um, it's in our hymnal as well. I didn't put the pages on 284 if you want to follow in the hymnal, or the words will be on the screen.
Sorry, the PowerPoint person didn't do a very good job. I'm sorry. That'd be me, loser. We're here now. <laughs> Ouch. Just saying. The scripture this morning is from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Salah. Happy are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Salah. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. And from John chapter 6, verses 56 through 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The words of eternal life. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted by my Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, for the Word of God within us. Thanks be to God. And now, the children can come forward. Is Kenley helping you, Weston? How's everybody today? 
Good. So let me ask you, who, who picked out your clothes today? You picked them out yourself? And you got dressed by yourself? Yeah? Wow. Who picked out your clothes, Harper? No, I picked You picked your own clothes out today? What about you, Harper? She doesn't know how to pick clothes. She really doesn't know how to pick clothes out? Yeah. Lisa, did you have to pick out her clothes or did they come packed already? They just, packed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mommy, and mommy picked them out. So, so you picked out your own clothes and you did pretty good. I have to tell you, I like Kate's shoes a lot. Can y'all see those shoes right there? I asked him what size they are. He's the, What size are they, Ash? Oh, eight. Eight. They're half. I asked him if I could borrow them. They're half the size of what I need. I need 15 and you wear eight. I don't think it's going to work. Hmm. So... What's the what's the first thing you do when you get when you get up in the morning? Harper, come here. What's with Papa? No, Weston. No, Harper, stay here, baby. Sit in Kinley's lap. So what's the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? Besides go to the bathroom, that's a given, I get it. Then what's the next thing? Get dressed. What's the first thing anybody else does? Take your medicine, okay? Before I even take my medicine, what's the first thing anybody else does? Look at your phone, okay? Because that is important, okay? And I'm with you. What else? Wash your face. But what's the very first thing? Anybody? There is that priority in life, right? Got to get the coffee going, okay? What else? Get your glasses on. The first thing that I do is look in the mirror. Anybody else do that? I mean, it's kind of scary, right? First thing in the morning, get up, you turn on the lights, and your eyes are bugging out. Weston, Michael. And your eyes are bugging out because of the lights, and you look in the mirror. And I don't know about all of you, but sometimes in the morning I go, oh, who is that? You ever, you ever ask yourself that? It's me, I know, but sometimes I wonder what's happened to me. I mean, JD and I have talked about that. I look in the mirror and I've got this big scar going, going down my chest and I think, what in the world has happened to me? But then I get in the shower, you know, feel better and then I have to pick out my clothes because Diane won't pick out my clothes for me at all. But I think I do. I think I do pretty good, don't you? Yeah, just say yes. Yeah. I did pretty good on those. Thank you, Wes. So, there's a scripture that I'm going to read in just a minute that talks about what we put on. Now, I know it's important, like when you go to school, you want to look nice, right? Do you, did, and you guys look, you look really nice the very first day. I saw Wes in your pictures. You looked really nice. Weston looked nice his first day of school. Yeah. We want to look nice, but the scripture reminds us that before we do anything else, the scripture says we have to put on the full armor of God. And that means we have to trust that God goes with us. And when I look in the mirror and I say to myself, geez, what's happened to me? Because I look like someone beat me up. But then I remember every morning, believe it or not, I do have a scar, yes. You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, I, I remember the first thing that I do is to ask God to be with me that day. Because the first thing I really do before I even get up, and you all may do this too, is go through the litany of my day. Does anybody else do that? What you have to do for that day? I mean, I do it every day. Yesterday, when I got up, I had to get up. We had to go to West's soccer game. I had to go to Maddie's volleyball game, and then we had to go, we went to the horse races in Columbus, where Lori didn't win. Jim did. JD did. Diane did. Russ did. Martha did. Elaine. Not Lori. <laughs> I go through the litany of my day. Do you guys ever do that? Think about Weston Michael. You know, Lori talked about that. 
And I think, okay, God, help me through all of this stuff because there's lots to do. Do you all do that? Today, I thought about what I'm going to do this morning. I got here early, get all my stuff ready. And today, Diane and I are leaving for vacation this afternoon. And so now my, my thoughts today were, okay, now I'm going to drive. Now, Chuck doesn't think I'm going to make it past Troy, maybe. I don't, I don't know. But we're trying to make it farther than Troy today. But I thought about that and all the things that are coming up this week. Because we have, a, we have a lot to do this week to get ready for a wedding in Hilton Head on Thursday. And I just know that... What? A wedding in Hilton Head. Remember? Paul was going to be gone for a week. Does that make him... He doesn't like that, do you? Yeah. Hmm? Work harder. Work harder, right. The God goes with us. That's the first thing I want us to remember. That we have to put on the full armor of God and trust that God always goes with us. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, God, for all you give to us. And for clothing us with all that we have and for your presence with us always. Bless these young people and their families in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we can go walking. You can stay right there if you want. I don't care. I'm guessing Grandma doesn't want to sit on the floor anymore. <laughs> she said, I'd do better if you carried me. We're trying to get her to walk. Uh huh. All right, you win. Several prayer concerns to share with you this morning uh, before we pray together. We continue to pray for Marie and for Althea and for Jackie. For Randy Martin, for Sandy, for Sandy, um, we have prayed in the past months for um, Dale and Jane's friend Loy. Um, her cancer was, I guess, in remission. Jane, I guess we could say, but now it's now it's come back, and it's severe, um, and so she needs our prayers. And Dale has a friend Tony um, who is in rehab and is in a, a fragile state in that rehab, and so. He needs our prayers as well. God, the psalmist reminds us better is one day in your house, better is one day in your presence than all the other days. And so, God, because of that, we've gathered in this place this morning, aware of your presence with us, aware of the Holy Spirit that fills this place and in turn fills us. The gift of relationship with each other. The reminder to clothe ourselves with your presence as we begin our day. Well, God, so we've come just as we are. 
Some of us are tired and weary. Some of us grieve. Some of us face the future that's unknown. We all come, though, God, simply needing your presence and your guidance. As does our world. Our world that that struggles to stop dropping bombs and shooting guns and, and waging warfare. Not just in the world that's far away, but in our own places and spaces and neighborhoods and communities. Oh God, we so need to look in the mirror and to put on the garments of righteousness and peace so that we would live our lives better. God, we have named many names who need your presence, your healing power, your love, and your grace. Many who simply need for you to abide with them and to sit beside them in the midst of their lives. Oh God, where it's needed the most, surround people with your Holy Spirit, with forgiveness and healing and grace. Soon, God, we'll leave this place. We'll go to places that are yet to be known to us. Our calendars are full. So go with us, God. Go ahead of us to prepare the way. Walk beside us to guide us and walk behind us to push us if need be. Oh God, thank you for calling us to this place. Thank you for allowing us to know of your spirit in this moment, in this place today. We give you thanks and praise God for all things. Hear our prayers, even the prayers closest to our hearts. And now here's God as we pray together our prayer of confession. Mighty one of Israel, we walk in paths well trodden by generations of fellow believers. We love to claim you as our God and to be known as your people. We love to hear the great deeds of the saints who went before us. We love to count ourselves in their mighty company. Forgive our hesitancy to build our own monuments to your importance in our lives. Forgive our reluctance to put on our own armor of faith as we face the powers of sin and death in our own lives. Amen. The Lord God is a sun and shield, bestowing favor and honor and every good thing on those who walk uprightly. Trust in the Lord and receive God's blessings. And then we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture for the sermon this morning comes from the book of Ephesians, 
chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. This might be one of the most known, familiar texts that we hear about putting on the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take a stand, take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand at your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. I invite you to pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I think there's something to be said about morning preparation. Now we all go about it differently. I know. Some of us take our medicine first. That's important. I don't. I don't put my glasses on first. I sh maybe I should, but I don't put my glasses on first. The first thing I do, however, in every single morning before I get up, I really do, I go over the litany of things for the day. Things that I know about. Things that are in my calendar. Things that I know I just have to accomplish in places I have to be and I go over all those things just to make sure I'm going to be in the right place. And then I look at my phone and look at my calendar just to make sure I haven't missed something. But it is that for me, after all of that, it is that first look in the mirror. Sometimes that can be scary, right? That first look in the mirror. I mean, I don't know about you all, but... I don't have a lot of hair, but what hair I have is gone in 6,000 directions. And I still look tired, and I have bags under my eyes. Does anybody else have that problem? And I'm not really ready to go. And because I really don't drink coffee anymore, you know, I live in this sad, coffeeless state of life. But I look in the mirror, and sometimes I do think of myself about how bad I look, how old I look. But then brush my teeth, get in the shower, do all those things, and then I take a brush through my hair like three times maybe. Then it's getting dressed. This morning it was that way. And then I got my clothes on and, and I tightened and straightened my tie. One last look in the mirror before I left the house. And then I got in the car and I looked in the mirror again. Does anybody else have this vanity problem besides me? Anybody? Kelsey? Yeah. Good. Me and Kelsey. Anybody else? Yeah. It's hard not to, right? And then I thought, okay, it's all right. So I get here. First thing I do when I arrive here for everybody else is make the coffee. I do all of those things that are important to do. And then I get ready and I look in the mirror again. And I put my microphone on and I put my cross on and I put my stole on. And then I look in the mirror again. 
before I come in here. Anybody else? I mean, I'm really not that vain. I, I guess I am really that vain. Scripture, I believe, is important for us. Now, it sounds rather military in its words. It sounds rather warlike in its words. But Paul's words are defensive words, not offensive. Not to go on offense, but to play defense. And Paul says to us that this life we live really should be a spiritual life. And that we should, before we do anything else, I'm pretty good at this, and I don't think it's vanity in this case, I'm, pre I'm pretty good at that. Every single day, when I go through the litany of my day, of the places I need to be, I really do try to put on this armor, asking God to guide my steps and my words and my thoughts. I really try to do those things that make a difference in the life of somebody else. We should begin our lives daily in that kind of way. Because look around us. You know, there, there are, we don't necessarily talk about them a lot, but there are all these forces that seem to work against us, right? They want to slow us down. They want to hinder us. They want to make sure things don't go in the way they should go. And we get defeated rather easily in our lives sometimes. But Paul says to us in this text, look, put on, well, here's what he says, right? Stand firm with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. None of that has to do with the clothes that we wear, or how our hair looks, or if we've got our makeup all in the right places. That has to do with God and beginning our lives with God's presence with us every single day. Now, I know on the days that I get up hurriedly when I've overslept and I'm not ready to go and I hurry through the motions. Do you all have that problem some days? You oversleep? Or you've forgotten that your 9.30 appointment really is 8.45? Anybody else have that problem but me? And so then you hurry. And you go through the motions really fast. And we forget all of this stuff that God has called us to. And then our days don't go as they should. I mean, I sometimes arrive home after a volleyball game. And depending on how long it goes, it's after 8 o'clock. And I rethink. I'm like, did I say those names right? Did I do the starting lineup right? Or did I actually mess it up? Well, she did it, which means... I didn't mess it up either. But then I have to go back to about 6 a.m. 6 a.m. is when I get up. I have to go back. I think, hmm, what did I do at 6 a.m.? When I don't do it well, do you know the first thing that I do at 6 a.m.? Turn on the television. Because at 6 a.m. you can watch this old house. I, started, I try to see if they match my skills, Chuck. I, I look back at 6 a.m. And I think, gee, I didn't start my day right. I didn't put on the belt of truth. I didn't, I didn't lace up my shoes of, of, to be on the journey correctly. Instead, I just got in a hurry. 
and trusted myself to do what it is that I thought was the most important thing. And God calls us in this text to put on the whole armor of God. And this thing is so full of, of possibility of what that looks like for us. It could be as simple as asking in a short prayer for God to guide us. It could be asking in a different way to pray for somebody else. It could be putting on this whole armor of God prepares us for what's about to come our way. Now, I know, luckily for us, that most days, you know, what we do is routine and mundane. That would be true, right? I mean, most days, we live in routine. On Thursday, I had to get the three Oats boys to school. So I got to their house at 507. Dustin was already gone. Mindy was going to work. So we got in the car. Carter got on the bus. No issues, thankfully. Carter got on the bus and went on his way. Hudson and Bennett and I in the car pulled up to Shelby Hills. I got out. That's where Hudson's going to go. I didn't think a thing about it. Except when Hudson's in my car, he thinks he's gone with me for the whole day. And so I opened his door and I said, get yourself unbuckled because he unbuckles himself. And he said, no, Papa, no. I said, come on, Bubba, we got to go. No, Papa, no. So I unbuckled him, lifted him out of the car. We went around the other side. We got Bennett unbuckled. Bennett and I walked up to the door. And I turned around. There's no Hudson. He's still at the car. So I went back. I said, Bennett, you stay there, which he did. It, but it was, it was worth a try. I said, come on, Hudson, let's go. No, Papa, no, he said. All the while breaking my heart, right? So finally get him in there, get him in this classroom. I make the fatal mistake of taking one last look at Hudson as he's standing there crying his eyes. So Ben and I got the car, we go to the Y, he pushes open the door, we go inside, and Dustin says, oh, Ben, it's easy, he'll just run right in his classroom. He opens the door, we walk inside. I say, come on, Bubby, let's go. And Ben, in all of his wisdom of two years, starts crying. And he stands there and cries. So I finally got him in his classroom, got all of his stuff, and I got in my car. And I thought, wow, that was not fun, that was not fun a little bit. Now the routine of their day is their daddy doing all of that. And they don't tell their daddy no, but they can tell Papa no. We mostly live our lives in the routine and mundane of a day. But there are those days, are there not, or those moments in our lives, whether it be a phone call or an interaction or something in the car or whatever it is, that the routine and the mundane are changed. And we want to say what, what Hudson said, no, Papa, no. Oh. It's then, I think, that the practice of every morning doing what Paul calls us to, the buckle of truth, belt buckle of truth, breastplate of righteousness, our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God that abides in us. That we're ready. Because you see, we know deep inside of us that we don't have the capacity deep inside of us to fight off every single thing in life, do we? We just don't. I would say to us that we should begin our days with this admonition. 
before we get in the shower, before we brush our teeth, before we comb our hair, whatever routine, before we take our medicine or put on our glasses or check our phones, to ask God to start with us. When Lori read Psalm 84, do you have that? Can I have it? Did you hear the words of Psalm 84? Hear it again. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home. Happy are those who live in your house. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. We begin our days like that. Give it a try this week. Give it a try. Tomorrow morning, before you even move a muscle, even if your alarm jerks you away, I don't use it. Does anybody use an alarm? I got this internal one. 6 a.m. Before you move a muscle tomorrow, before you do anything tomorrow, think about your day. Do a litany if you can. And then ask God in that moment, those 30 seconds even, to ask God to help you to stand firm, to put on the belt of faith, to lace up your shoes, if you will, with peace. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Think about doing that tomorrow. Before you do anything else. You see, because I know and I already confess to you that I'm going to look in the mirror five or six or ten times. Sometimes, you know, if you're in the right, if you're in the right place, I look in the mirror and go, "Yeah, I look pretty good." And then I, you go to some places and you wonder if people looked in the mirror at all. Do you ever wonder that about folks? All the time, because I think sometimes, boy, if, if they looked in the mirror, they wouldn't have left the house, right? They just wouldn't have. Before all of that, before all of that. Give yourself an opportunity to have God guide your steps. And then let's come back in two weeks. Two weeks, mind you. And we'll talk about it. I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the guiding of your scripture and your spirit. Help us to stand firm. But we know we stand, we can't stand firm, God, unless we've started with you. To help us make our decisions better. And maybe, just maybe, when the situation arises, as it did with Hudson and Papa, no, Papa, no. Remind us again to stop, God. And hear your voice as it speaks to us. Thank you, God, for your blessings among us and through us this day and always. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing our closing hymn this morning, Blessed Assurance.
beginning words of that hymn for us that begins our day. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. May that God dwell with you today and always. Amen. Well, here are the post them, and you're welcome to go in peace. <laughs> Thank you.